Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Olson and this is Milk and Cookies Painting. And in today's episode, we are going to be painting an awesome little mountain stream. I'm going to teach you how to change this into this. Today we're going to paint a happy little mountain stream. Alright everybody, today for painting colors we're going to use light green, light olive green, cadmium yellow, phthalo blue, titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, lamp black, and a cobalt blue. Okay, let's get started. Now let's be careful with black. Black is one of those that can be really good, but also I have seen it ruin more paintings than any other color out there. That being said, let's jump in. Let's try the black. I'm going to go ahead and take our three quarter inch brush and we're going to get some lamp black on there. I'm going to do about the first third of the painting, so I'm going to drag it across the painting here. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint that in. We need those darks first, and we need to get those in there soon so that we have a color to build on top of. Now you can add black to any of your colors in small amounts and it will darken them. But if you put too much, it will definitely overpower whatever color you're trying to paint on. So it's okay to do short strokes while you are trying to get one particular spot. But for the most part, we want long strokes. I'm going to go ahead and go over to both sides of my canvas here. And paint those down. I like to paint the edges because I like people to have a finished product when they leave. Um, you can frame these if you wish, but I prefer just the regular finished canvas. We like to send our paintings home as finished as possible. I like to sharpen my brush and what that means is you get a little paint on it and you press that against the side of your palette. That will give you a nice semi razor sharp edge so that if you have to do straight lines you can just place that on the canvas and all, all the way across. There. This is the reference image we'll be using today uh, to kind of block in our river. Now it looks like the top is pretty dark and that will allow us to throw some weeds and, and things in there but it also looks like there's a couple of darker spaces down around here. So let's go ahead and just throw some of this black on the canvas and I'm going to say that you know maybe that rock is lives about halfway here so we're going to put a little black paint with which to make a base from and paint down the side a little bit then I'm going to come out a little bit give ourselves a little bit of dark. And we can kind of block this in a little bit. We can say here's our ridge where the next little waterfall happens. Maybe here's where our boulder is and there's a maybe a little boulder right there in front of it like we have in the image. And maybe there's a boulder that comes up here. So we can tell where our boulders are going to live. So when we're blocking in our river, we can tell it kind of comes down this way. Maybe this is that rock that comes into the river on that side. And it flattens out a little bit right there. And then there's another boulder out here. Sometimes it's, it can be really helpful to block this in a little bit by sketching with your paintbrush. Um, when you 
sketch this out, when you paint over top of this, you won't be able to see any of these lines. But at least you'll know kind of where things are going to be. There's a little kind of grotto back in here. Some rocks that come down here. I don't typically sketch mine on the canvas first. I like the more free-form style of painting. Um, and so I'll look at a picture and it's important when you're painting to kind of paint from back to front, either from dark to light or light to dark, depending on what color your background is. So um, the next thing I'll do in here is we'll go ahead and clean out this brush. And too bad this is an oil painting or I would beat the devil out of the brush like Bob Ross does. But our, our brushes are significantly smaller and a little more fragile, so we're a little more delicate with our brushes than old Bob. Alright, so uh, when I clean out my brushes, typically I'll just dip the paintbrush into the water once or twice and then try and get all of that paint off into a clean paper towel. And the reason I do that, well, there's two reasons I do that. One is so it keeps our water nice and clean so we don't have to keep changing it. And two, it helps keep our brushes nice and sharp for when we want to use them later. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a little bit of blue into our paint. I'm going to go ahead and snag a little bit of that cobalt blue. And then I'm going to pull some of that blue into the water here. Now, this might not cover all of the places that we're going to need water, but water is sort of one of those things that has different, um, different lighting to it. So over here, it looks like a little darker. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my brush and pull it down the side. This will be kind of where our water is going to go down over. Now it's pulling some of that black in. Don't worry about that. That's just the original chalked in drawing or painting. I'm going to go ahead and paint in so on that side, oh, we missed a rock over here. Maybe he'll live right about in there. And our river will come down through here. Now, if you look at these rapids, you're seeing what you're seeing is a lot of white. Um, you don't see a ton of blue. But there is blue in there, and there is green, which I'm about to put in there. Since we're kind of mixing this down in a little bit. We're going to take a little bit of that light olive green and get it on our brush. And we're going to paint that water in just a little bit. I'm using the side of my brush to kind of get that in there. That light olive green has a little bit of yellow in it. That's okay. Sometimes water looks a little bit yellow. Now at this point, you might be thinking, man, that looks like a mess, <laughs> right? Sometimes your paintings will look like a mess at first uh, until you kind of get things blocked in where you need them. Uh, it looks like, let's go ahead and start throwing some of these rocks in here. I know it's not very nice to throw rocks, but we're going to do it anyway. I'm going to take some of this yellow ochre and just a tiny bit of the burnt sienna. And I'm going to mix those down. And I'm going to take a little bit of white as well. What we want is a nice light brown color. We don't want these rocks to be completely white, but they need to have kind of a lighter, lighter, white, whitish sort of hue. 
Don't be afraid of mixing too much white in here. Um, acrylic paint tends to dry just a little bit darker. You are going to need quite a bit of paint for these rocks, but if you get kind of a nice brown off-white, that'll get us to where we need to be. I'm going to go ahead and come up just a little higher with this rock here. If you want to do your shadows, you can just add, go back to a little bit of your brown, or even just take one little tiny speck of black, and mix that down in there, so we get more of a gray color. Throw some paint on there. Get that kind of blocked in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and lift this up and paint down the side of my canvas here. And that pulled a little bit of that black into here, which is okay because this color is going to have to come down in temperature a little bit. Alright, let's go ahead and get some of this excess paint off of here. Oops. Let's go ahead and block in a couple of these other rocks. So this one is a pretty big rock. It kind of starts here. And it kind of makes its way down there. There's another little rock leaning right up next to it. Now Bob Ross is somebody who likes a technique called wet on wet painting. Uh, we don't typically paint wet on wet. Uh, we like to let our stuff dry a little bit, which is why we like acrylic painting so much. Because if you have made a mistake or you don't like your painting, you can wait 15 minutes or so uh, on the high end and um, then paint right over the top of it. Now when you're painting this river, and specifically this, these boulders, you want to remember that there's lots of different colors in here. And it's okay if a little bit of that color blends in with what you're doing. You can even grab a little bit of black on your brush and kind of make that rock have a little shadow here. There. OK. 
Okay. Now let's uh, throw a little shadow, a little more black, just a touch on the end of your brush. Let's throw a little shadow down in here. Let's give those rocks a little bit of weight. Now the reason with painting that we do that we go back to front is so that we don't get in this situation where we have to we we painted this nice rock and now we have blank canvas so we have to go back in and paint that in. So um, we can do that, but sometimes if we're not really super careful, we'll have to repaint that anyway. Um, so. I would suggest always trying to get a kind of a base coat down and then going back in and doing your details. And if in your details you decide that something's not quite where you want it or where it needs to be, um, you can fix that, um, but you should really should block in some of that first. So I'm going to take a little bit of this white on my brush. And I'm going to touch the corner into black so we have just a tiny little bit of gray. And I'm going to go ahead and come in there, come around this rock. And the river kind of disappears into the distance up there. But I need some paint on the canvas here. So I'm just going to kind of use this gray as a base coat and then we'll go in and add what we need to later. Now this white also is picking up a little bit of the that kind of sketching that we had done. The paint from the sketching we had done. That's okay, we're going to cover it. Um, but now we can go in and decide, oh okay, well, there's a rock that kind of comes down into the water here. Uh, it'll be covered by some bushes here, and there's some bushes that dot up around there. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our light brown that we've made. And we'll add even a little more white to this. And we're going to start... blocking this in just a little bit. So that's pretty nice color, but it's pretty close to what we've got in there already. So I'm going to add a little more brown to it just to make it pop a little bit. So you can either mix your paint on the canvas or um, you can mix it on your palette. Either way is acceptable. Sometimes it might be more work to do it on the canvas. Sometimes that's where the fun comes. Let's see here. Again, it looks like a little bit of a mess. We can clean up our brush a little bit before we move on to a next color or the next part of this. Let's see, it looks like we've got a rock down here we need. There's a couple of brown spots in here. And then we can move on to the brushes. Or to the bushes, sorry. Not brushes. I've got brushes on the brain. Go ahead and add that in here.
And like I said before, this is a little free, more free form than I usually do. Um, usually I cover everything and then I start to block things in, but this, this is a little more fun today. I'll have to come over this here in just a bit. More color. Let's add some brown in here before we get too far. And while we're going, I'm going to go ahead and flip the canvas. Sometimes this is a good exercise just to make sure you don't forget to paint the bottom of the canvas. And you should try and match the colors as best you can. a little bit of that cobalt blue in here. Now the cobalt is a little bright. What we're going to be using here in a second is that phthalo or phyllo blue just to give things a better feel to them. Okay. Now the last thing I'm going to do to paint the bottom of this is make sure that corner is painted. Let's get that rock in there. We're going to paint the side. Okay, now we're going to give it just a minute so that it will dry and then we'll move on to starting to paint in some more of these details. Okay, now our bottom of our painting's dry. It's been about 10 minutes or so. We're going to go ahead and throw that back up there. I'm going to make sure my brushes are clean again before I continue on. Um, I, I wipe it off on the paper towel so that um, it gets most of the paint out. Uh, a lot of the pigments that we have, a lot of the paints that we have, uh, stain the bristles and that's okay just as long as there isn't big chunks of paint in there. And hopefully you're not mixing old paint with new paint when you go on. One thing real quick. I'm gonna touch up the black uh, I think when we turned it upside down, there was a little brown paint. Okay. Since I've got the black and the brush, I can go in and fix some of these edges. I'm just kind of using what's left on the brush. There's just a little black on there. Just kind of doing the dry brush thing. Sometimes it can help to make some of the layered effect 
We'll go a little black on this. Go a little brown, so we kind of a dark brown. Let's add a little bit of white so it comes a little more gray brown. If that makes sense. This rock back in here, let's make sure our brush is nice and sharp. We're going to go ahead and block in this back rock here. It's a little darker than we have it. Let's bring a little bit of that paint around the corner there. Just to make sure our rock doesn't end right at the corner. Now on that one in particular, I'm not trying to cover up everything that we had. And I don't want my lines to be too geometric. Some of that dark in there, that's good. There. Okay, let's see. Let's work on this other rock on the left. Just a little bit. Let me get a little bit more of that darker color and work on blending these shadows. Sometimes you need a little bit of a brighter color though. So we can touch into our white if we need to a little bit, and we can we want to try and conceal our brush strokes if we can. And go around the edge here. Now, looks like I came a little too high up in here with my rock. So if you're watching at home and you want to paint your scene a little differently, that's fine. I'm going to try and kind of conform to this a little bit better. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of that lamp black on top of there. Rock is going to fade away into nothing. It's okay if there's a little color up in there. That shouldn't be too bad. Okay. I'm going to tidy up that brush. We'll set it aside. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that medium sized brush. 
we're going to go ahead and dip into, uh, what should we do? Let's do the bushes up top first. We'll go into that olive green, light olive green. And we're going to put a happy little bush right in there. So we may end up having to do multiple different layers of things. Let's see, this is a big old bush over in here. Maybe that's a George Sr. I am taking the brush and I'm just kind of from the side just tapping on that until our little bushes appear in here. There. And then I'm going back sharpening that brush. We want a little bit of difference in our difference in our bush. So we want the closest to us to be kind of the brightest. But we want layers of color. We don't want there to be all one color. Let's see, let's throw a little bit of this up here. Looks like there's maybe a grove of trees or something in the back, but it's kind of lighter. So we're just going to touch on this and kind of blend it in. to the back. There's something you can see here. Now on top of black, if you're using a, a green, like this green, you should be able to see it pretty well. Um, you can also use a little bit of this uh, cadmium yellow if you'd like. Put a little bit of that on your brush and that also will affect the way these bushes turn. I don't love the cat yellow. <laughs> Let's go back to that light olive green. My brush has picked up a little bit of the lamp black so I'm gonna go clean that brush off and go back to painting with just that light olive green. I really like that. So the majority of my colors today come from uh, the Creative Inspirations line from Jerry's Artorama. And I really like the Creative Inspirations brand, but there are a few brands I like as well. One of them is the Master's Touch brand, which is where this light olive green comes from. And another brand I, I use quite frequently is uh, Michael's house brand, which is uh, called Artist Loft. Sorry, I forgot I had to look real quick. I use Artist Loft quite a bit um, because of, I like the color difference in it. So there's places where the green should be covering, but it isn't quite covering. So we can switch down to a, a different color, or we can do another coat with that. Um, we can always add in a little bit of this Creative Inspirations light green, and just as particularly on those edges where we don't want to see a hard line, we can kind of blend that in a little bit. And we'll just try and use what's on our brush until it is completely gone. Green is one of those colors that you can 
use for quite a bit until it goes away. Now I picked up a little bit of that lead black that I had. The top wasn't completely dry, so I've added a little lamp black to my brush. You can either go ahead and use it and kind of try and blend that those trees in, or you can clean off your brush and go back to the straight color that you want. <coughs> so, add a little bit of... They call this method stippling. They, they say this that in craft painting a lot. When you're stippling, you're kind of just taking the brush and bouncing it up and down and letting the paint kind of do its thing. Sometimes you can get a really cool effect with stippling. All right, we're going to sharpen our brush again. And we're going to do a couple little things up in here. So it looks like there's some trees. Make sure you go over the top a little bit. And around that corner. Because we don't want to leave this looking like it's undone. I'm going to actually bring that green all the way down to that rock edge there. Just so it looks like it's kind of in a deep forest. Okay, well we've got some of this green. Let's put a little bit more in the water here, just for reflection's sake. We're going to come back in and add some white and some more blues in there, but we want to do a little bit of reflections in the water. There's some green in this water. There. Well, let's see here. What have we got going on here? We're going to go ahead and bring this Bring a big bush down in here as well. And yeah, particularly over top of So we'll go ahead and do just a few more leaves here and there. We want some brightness. We like to do things with layers so that you see some places have layers and some don't. Things look real when there's have a little depth to them. All right, let's just do this area one more time down here. Maybe we'll pull just a little bit of that darker green. Well, it's called light green, but it's a little bit of a darker hue than what we've got on there. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and clean out my brush, get some of that green out of there. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and take some white, get it on both sides there of my brush, sharpen my brush just a little bit, and I'm going to start adding this river in here. It's going to start way up in here. And I'm just going to let the brush take control for a second. Okay, let's go ahead and get some more white paint on our brush. I'm going to go ahead and bring some of this white in here. I 
feels like I need some more weight. So I'm going to jump <coughs> into that. I'm going to brighten this up a little bit. Sometimes you aren't able to see the layers and layers of paint. So sometimes it's nice to do some thick paint. Other times you need the thin layer. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm going to grab just a a little bit of that brown. Sorry, a little bit of the burnt sienna. And I'm mixing it down with a little bit of white, and there was just a little bit of the black there. That mixed just a little bit so that we can go in here and we can add a few rocks. There's a few little places in here that need some rocks there. Alright, so we're going to add a few last minute details here. We're going to come with the white all along the edge of this dark just a little bit. We're going to come through here. We're going to put some rapids in here. And let's get rid of some of that brown. Well, Let's add just a couple little touches of black in here just because we want to give the illusion that there's a little drop right here. Maybe a rock or something that the water is coming up over top of. We'll do that in a couple other areas up here as well. Painting is about layers and layers and layers. And there's little shelves and things for the water to live on. There. Okay, I've still got just a tiniest hair of black in there, but I'm going to add some more white to my brush. And in a few spots, we're going to go over that pretty heavy. Sometimes if you just touch the black paint with the white paint, it smears, just like that. That's what not to do. Here, let me show you a better way. I want to give that effect of that river coming from a little bit farther away. I'm just going to lightly touch one little corner into that blue and then scrape most of it off. I just kind of want to give a little bit of this white just the slightest tinge of blue. It might even be too much blue. So right up in here where the water's a little farther away and on the shelves it looks like it's A little bit darker. Okay, then in here, I'm going to go ahead and clean up this area a little bit. Remember 
to come around the corner with your waves. This side we kind of stopped right here so that side can be darker brown, that's okay. I'm going to add a little bit of this called cobalt blue, or sorry not cobalt, the phthalo blue to my brush. And right in here we're going to make it just a little A little darker. Okay. And by little darker I mean <laughs> we're gonna go just a little bit brighter on color. Mix some of that color up in here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clean off my brush and go into a little bit more of that pure white. And we'll try and disperse this just a little bit. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and add a few little ripples in the water. Every now and again it pulls in just a little bit of that blue or a little bit of that dark. That's okay. We want to do have the effect of it being a river that's mixing and churning. I'm going to take this and just sort of drag it down in a few areas so it looks like it's Coming over the and then sometimes you have to change the direction of the water. Where is it coming from? What's it doing? Let's see, it's going to start coming from this direction. There. I feel like that's getting there on the waterfall. Let's uh, do a couple of other places here. A couple little ripples on the water. Now, let's pay attention to the bottom of our canvas here. It's looking quite bad when you go from water to no water, so I'm going to continue on with my white down here and blend it just a little bit so that it doesn't have to be totally perfect as it winds the corner but it doesn't look like it's a completely different painting either. Okay, there we go. 
Now you can add more details here and there. Um, you can keep working on your rocks if you like. I'm going to add a little bit of quick touches to some of these rocks. Just last minute thing. And we'll go ahead and put a shadow on this rock down here. And underneath, so it looks like it's all one big. And I'm just going to add one more quick shadow up here. I'm going to brighten that up actually. And if you want a nice blend, you just go over and over and over it until it blends to be the color that you want. So blend it around that corner. And we'll do a couple little spots up here on that rock. The last thing we're going to do is every time you complete a painting, you need to sign it. I think I'll sign this one in black with my small size brush. So I'll go ahead and sharpen that brush by putting it in the paint and twisting it just a little bit so we get a nice point on our brush. So then I will go ahead and sign this here. And there you have it. From all of us here at Milk and Cookies Painting, thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and uh, share our videos. Uh, we love to paint. We love to uh, teach people how to paint. We'd love to see what you guys would like to paint. Please comment down below and tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to paint next. And then come paint with us. The wonderful thing about uh, getting a painting done and taking a look at it, stepping back, you can see where the obvious flaws are. So every once in a while, you know, you say, oh, maybe there should be a full-blown shadow here. Well, you can come back at, to your painting after it's done, and you can add a little bit of that brown together with a little bit of that white, and just a, just a skosh of black, and get a nice shadowy color in there. For the black and say you know what I want that shadow to be totally filled in so I'm going to go ahead and bring that shadow down and fill that right in There. From all of us here at Milk and Cookies Painting, have a great day. All right. Well, this has been our quick little river painting. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, let us know if you liked it, and we'll see you next time.